Sea. How do you hear, sir? Okay, I hope people you can hear me. Yes, sir. Okay. The people they, they are telling me that my data has finished. All right. Okay. So for a profit making organization, their main purpose is to make profits. But after making a profit, you can't be in Ghana and be doing business and you have only one one unit and you'll be okay. No, you think about growing as a business or expanding as a business. And this expansion or this growth, if you want to do it, you can use your own resources to do it. Maybe you're in Accra and you want to move to Kumasi. You can go there, go and establish everything there, like you need to build the facilities by the company itself. So the company can decide to do this one internally. They can decide to do that one internally by using their own resources to finance the expansion. So you go to Kumasi, you put your own structure there, you do everything by yourself. Another way is that a company can decide to go and or maybe merge with another company or go and acquire another company which is already operating in Kumasi. So what we are coming to look at today is a way of companies seeking to grow or to expand beyond their duration. So you are in Ghana, you want to expand to Togo. You can go there and use your own money to do whatever you want to do. Or you can go there and acquire a company that is already operating in Togo. So if you talk about growth or expansion, we have two types of what? Growth. We have what we call the internal growth, which we call the organic growth, which we call the, the organic growth. And we can also have the mergers and acquisition, which we call the inorganic growth. If you are talking about organic growth, we are talking about the entity using their own resources to finance the growth. They are going to do everything themselves. They are going to start from scratch. So they will go there, put structures and those things there. So they are going to do everything themselves. And this one, the one of the advantages about this one is that this particular one can be controlled. Because you're using your own resources, you can only cut your quote according to your size. So if you don't have that, you can't go and be putting that over there. So you are going to use your own materials. You are going to use your own workers. You are going to use your own employees for this. So you can actually control it. You can't do more than you can do. You can't do more than you can do. And this one, what normally happens is that you're not going to change your structure. Your organizational structure, you're not going to change it because you are doing everything on your own. But for mergers and acquisitions, since you people you are merging or you are acquiring another company, there will be sometimes issue with integration. We are going to have integration problems where a company is operating matrix structure, one is operating functional structure. Now you are coming to put the two together. You are going to have problem with how you are going to do their issues because each and every organization has different culture and different structure. So putting the two together will become complex. But for internal one, it's your own organization that you are doing. So you can still maintain your structure. You can still maintain your structure and you can easily use the resources that you can have. You can easily make use of what available resources that you can have. So if you have employees who are good in that particular field, you can easily make use of them. But if you are going to do acquisition or merging, you don't know the caliber of the employees that you are going to, of the company that you are going to acquire or the company that you are going to combine your business with. So you are going to have problem with the expertise of the employees too. So one of the thing, one of the advantages of, few of the advantages of using the organic growth is that the growth can be controlled. The growth can be controlled. The growth can be controlled and you can easily make use of your words your experienced workers or your internal expertise or your internal assets, your valuable assets, you can easily make use of them. But the disadvantage is that this is, is, is it takes time for you to go and put structure and do things there. You can just go there and acquire a company one day, that is all. But you go and be putting structure in there, it, it is a waste of time and sometimes expensive. It is a sometimes expensive. Going to buy cement, do all those things, it, it will cost the company. 
it is sometimes expensive and uh, it also wastes time. And the only thing is it doesn't give access to, the company will not have access to enough markets, like if they should go and acquire uh, a different company. You see the company that you're going to acquire has market already. They have a market already. They have customers already. So if you are going to acquire them, it means that you are directly having access to what those market, those customers that they already have. Those customers that they already have. So for the organic growth, which we call the internal one, the company using its own resources to do everything on their own. But if you come to mergers or acquisition, which we call the inorganic growth, this one, the company deciding to merge with a similar or a competitor. So that you can see the case of Ethel Tigo. You see, Ethel Tigo, they know that individually they can stand the competition from Vodafone and MTN. So they are coming to form forces together and compute. So what they do is that you can see that Ethel Tigo are competitors, they are similar companies. So they can just put themselves together, combine their operations and do a lot of things together. So major has to do with you trying to make your business or combine your business with a what? With a competitor. So this one, nobody is paying. You are just bringing the two business together. But acquisition, acquisition has to do with one company buying the other one. One company buying the other one. So, in the example, I can ask you, differentiate between organic growth and organic growth, or mergers and acquisition, or the internal growth. Internal growth, the company is doing everything on their own. But for external or in organic growth, the company is either merging with a competitor or they are acquiring a competitor. All right. Let's look at some of the advantages of merger or acquisition as an expansion strategy. The first one is it is fast. It is very fast. You just go there and buy. That is all. You pay the money, then you start operation. It's very fast. And sometimes it is less expensive. It is less expensive. The money that you are going to use to do your own things will be will be more expensive than the money that you are going to pay. Like those, if you want to cook, you can see that if you are cooking you're by yourself, if you are doing it in-house, like you go and buy tomatoes, everything, like you see that, no, this thing, the time and all those things, it will be expensive. So you just go to the roadside and buy food. Yes, that is what we are talking about here. Acquisition of what's valuable assets if the company that you are going to acquire they have valuable employees valuable assets it means that you are also going to acquire those assets if uh, if the organization has a good relationship with the customers as soon as you are going to acquire acquire them you're also having access to that particular good relationship that they have with their customers. If they have a strategic location, as soon as you acquire them, you are having access to those locations. So what we are trying to say is that you are going to have access to what? Goodwill. If you acquire them, you have access to all the good things that they have. And if you, if you also acquire them, you are going to have access to the bad things that they have. So it's both ways. So it can be positive or negative. The next one is access to overseas markets. So if you are buying a company from Nigeria, it means that the customers that they have in Nigeria, you're having access to them. And it can also help you to have access to market that the company will find to get access to if they want to do it themselves. If you are going to buy the company in Togo, it means that they already have customers there. So if you're acquiring them, it means that you also have access to the customers, the customers base or the customer base that they have in Togo. So acquisition will give you easy access to what? Overseas markets. Sometimes it can also give you access to market that you find difficult to enter by yourself. Another one is create competitive advantage. Create competitive advantage. They say two hairs are better than one. You can see that MTN and Etel, 
those days, Airtel cannot compete with what? MTN. But now they have Airtel Tigo. They can put their forces together and be able to fight MTN better. So if you are talking about competitive advantage, it means that this particular company has some kind of valuable expertise or assets. So another company also has some valuable expertise and assets. So if you are coming together, if you join your forces, if you join your expertise together, you can be able to perform better than if you are doing it individually. That's what we are talking about, the, the competitive advantage. The next one is it creates synergy. It creates synergy. Synergy is the benefit that the two companies are going to get when they merge or when one acquire the other. So the synergy can be in, in, in a form of increase in revenue, reduction in cost. What we are saying is that the benefits, you see, Etel has a, a CEO and Tigo also has a CEO. But right now they are merging, they can't have two CEOs. They are going to have only one. So you can see the salary that they are going to pay to, to, to those CEOs, the two CEOs. It, you see that they will be saving one of them. You see, this is a bad thing, but it's, it's also a nice thing because they are reducing cost. You see, so what will bring benefit to them? You can see that at 30 go, they may be having different employees, but now that they are joining their forces together, it means that they can use one of them, the employees, the, the, employee, the number of employees to reduce. Maybe the machines that they use, they cannot use one machine to do the two SIM cards. So you can see that it's going to give them some form of what? Cost savings. That is what we are talking about the synergy. So the benefit that the team will bring is the synergy. Is the synergy. All right, let's come to disadvantages of majors as expansion strategy. The first one is exposure to business risks. The exposure to business risk has to do with you merging with a similar company, unrelated company. So if you are in the hospitality industry that you are merging with a company in the financial industry you can see that these two companies are operating a different industry and they have a different operational risk so you are not familiar the company hospitality industry are not familiar with the operations of the financial industry so in that case you don't know the risks associated with the companies in the in the financial industry so a hospitality company acquiring a bank you, you don't have any idea about how issues about bank works no you don't you don't have any idea about that so you are going to expose yourself to business risks the business risks is where you are merging with a similar company where you are merging with a similar what company every company has its own operational risk so if you're in your hospitality company you know how to control your issues if you don't have the room and all those things. You don't have to control them. But financial, you don't have any idea. You don't have any idea. Another one is exposure to financial risk. The financial risks, we are talking about the financial structure, the capital structure of the company. If you are a company, you don't have debts. And now you are going to acquire a company which has more debt than equity. You are going to acquire that poor capital structure too. And that will also expose you to financial risks. If we talk about financial risks, we are talking about the capital structure of the companies. One of them is purely by what? Shareholders, no debt. And you are going to acquire a company which has more debt than equity. You see that you'll be taking care of what? The interest and all those things. And it will expose you to what we call the financial risk. Another one is what we call acquisition premium. Sometimes, you are going to pay more than what you should pay. The value of the company is, is 200 million, but the shareholders are, they say they want 400 million. The difference is the acquisition premium. So the excess amount that you are going to pay is also a factor. Another one is it can also create what we call integration problems, integration pro problems. The integration problem has to do with the two companies having a different culture and different organizational structure. Now you are coming to bring the two together. You have to look for a suitable structure that can accommodate the two. By so doing, that will make your issues, the operations of the company, 
very difficult. So sometimes it will be very difficult for you to accommodate the culture that the subsidiary is having into the parent culture. They have a different ways and they have a different ways of doing things. The workers, they go to work 9.30. Now you, your place, the workers, they go to work 7.30. You can see that it will be very difficult for you to convince the 9.30 people to change to 7.30. That is the integration problem that we are talking about. Another one also is it can also cause dilution of ownership. The company that you are going to merge with, if I'm having 80% shareholding, now we are coming to merge. You can see that if we put the, these things together, you put the two shares together, put the two companies together, my shareholding of 80% will automatically reduce because the two shares will now be put together and be expressed over 100. So your 80% shareholding in the other company might be 50% or 30% in the new company, which is going to cause a reduction in your proportion of, uh, of your ownership. So if you are merging, there is an issue of uh, the dilution of the ownership of the former shareholders. Another issue is, another issue is, this sometimes might be expensive. This sometimes might be expensive. Sometimes, measures and acquisition can be expensive. Measures and acquisition can be expensive, depending on the company that you are going to acquire. I'm even looking for the point, I can't get them, but three or two are okay. Let's look at types of mages. Types of mages. A major, you can tell Tigo. You can see that they are similar companies. They operate related what operations. They have related activities. So if you are if you are merging with your own competitor, a company that has the same operation, a company that carry out the same operation like yourself, we see that is what we call horizontal what major or horizontal integration horizontal major or horizontal integration so ethel tigo can be seen as horizontal integration or horizontal major we also have what we call vertical major although you people you are not carrying out the same operation but you people are located within the same production line or distribution line the example is we have vertical, vertical. You put you are within the same product line or distribution line. The example is a shoe making company is merging with what? Leather manufacturing company. Leather manufacturing company. So shoe making company is merging with what? Leather manufacturing company. Or car engine manufacturing company is merging with a car dealer. You can see that these two people are within the car distribution line or the product line. So the shoemaker will buy the raw materials from the leather manufacturer. Then they will use it to now make their shoes. So if you are merging with a company which does not carry the same operation like yourself, but you are within the same product line or the distribution line. We say that is what we call vertical integration or vertical measure. So this can be backward or forward. Some people will say forward or backward. Okay, it can be backward or forward. Okay, if it is backward integration, it means that a customer is now buying a supplier. So if you look at the distribution channel, the customer will be ahead of the supplier. So the shoe making now is coming to merge with what? The leather manufacturing company. That is backward. Because within the distribution line, the leather manufacturing will give to what? The shoe making. So the shoe making company will be ahead of the leather manufacturing company. So if shoe making companies not acquiring or merging with the leather manufacturing company. We see that is backward what? Major 
or backward integration. But if it is forward, it means that the supplier now buying what? A customer. So the leather manufacturing now trying to acquire or merge with what the shoe making. So that is forward because the shoe, the leather company will give to what the shoe making. So the shoe making within the product line or the distribution line, the shoe making is, is ahead of them. So if you talk about backward, it means a customer acquiring or merging with what a supplier. But if you talk about forward, it means that a supplier merging with what a customer or acquiring what customer. We also have what we call conglomerates. Conglomerates. So if it is the horizontal can be named as concentric, concentric what merging or integration. But if you talk about a conglomerates, we are talking about unrelated merging. You are merging with a company that you don't have any idea about. Hospitality and a financial is hospitality company and a financial institution. No. You don't have any idea. You people, you don't have anything in common. So that is what we call the conglomerate. Un unrelated what? Major. You, you are coming to do, it's a form of divestiture. It's a form of what? Diversification. You are trying to divest your business activities. You are trying to divest your business activities. So a cassette producing company is now buying Is a cassette producing company is now buying uh maybe food manufacturing company or food processing company. You can see that they have they don't have anything in common. So that is what we call the conglomerate or the unrelated word merging. Let's look at what we call creating synergy. Synergy, we talk about we say that synergy is a form of benefits that the two companies or that the merging or the acquisition will bring to the two companies. That will bring to the two companies. That is what we call the synergy. Synergy is the benefits. So this can be in the form of revenue, which is going to increase your revenue, which is going to increase revenue. So if the two of you are coming together, how will your revenue be increased? How will your revenue be increased? You have marketing expertise. So if you bring the two together, it means that the two of them can bring can do more than if they are doing it individually. And this is going to increase revenue because they are going to exploit their marketing skills and get customers. If it's going to reduce cost, you have two CEOs, but now you can only have one CEO. The salary that you're going to pay to the other CEO, the company will be saving it. That is a reduction in cost. So we are talking about the benefits. If they say synergy, synergy, we are talking about the benefits. The benefits. Let's look at what we call defensive strategy. You see, sometimes... Mergers and acquisition cannot be that easy. You see, if you want to go and acquire a company, if the shareholders are not willing to buy, they are going to frustrate you. They are going to deploy tactics or strategies that will make you know to, you even have, you don't have any interest in buying that particular company again. So we are going to look at the defensive strategies, the defensive strategies that company use in mergers and acquisition. The first one is, the company can, the company that you are going to buy, the company can make what you call a counter offer. The company will make what you call counter offer. So, MTN want to buy, MTN want to buy Tigo. Now, Tigo, MTN, is MTN that want to acquire Tigo. Now, Tigo is telling that they want to acquire the MTN. That's what we call the counter offer. So, the, oh, they say we are we want to buy. They say no, we want to buy people. So how much are you selling? Yes, they are going to frustrate the thing. So you are making a bid for them. They are also making a bid to acquire you. That's what we call the counter offer or the reverse what major or reverse acquisition. So we want to buy you. They are now giving us offer that they want to acquire us. That is what we call the reverse offer or the company making a counter offer. In this case, you can see that the, the company who want to buy will not buy again because the person that you want to buy, the person want to buy. You. So what do you do? You just give up. That is also one of the what, defensive strategies. The next one is the company that you want to buy. Which we call the target company. The company want the company who want to buy, we call it a predator company. 
but the company that they want to buy is what we call the target company. So the target company can just be there and they will be doing like these footballers. You see what they will do. They will bring the offer. Then the team will be there and be looking for better opportunities. If, if any better opportunities come, then they will give the player to that particular team or that particular club. So they will be delaying your what? Your bid. They will be they will be draining, looking for better opportunities. Better opportunities. Whenever that better opportunities come, then they can sell to that particular company. So try to find a more acceptable counter bidder for your company instead of the original Pideta company. This is refers to what we call the white knight defense. So you have you have you have send a bid to us, but we'll be looking at it and be like playing the playing delay tactics with you that oh we're going to look at it but meanwhile we are looking for a company that will come with what a favorable amount of money and we give it to that particular company so another one too is that the people who are responsible for the process like maybe the business valuers they can try to convince the shareholders of a target company that the offer is not acceptable the money is too small the money is too small. So they should increase the money or something like that. Another one is that a company can also demand a higher what severance arrangements. So it means that if you are going to acquire what we, we are going to make, automatically some of our employees will be laid off. If that happens, you have to pay us money. So they will be demanding for higher amount of money. And the company cannot what? The company cannot afford. It's not that they are they if they if they, they, they actually want the money, it's because they want to delay the process or they don't want to sell. So they'll be demanding for what? Higher maybe sending costs. I don't know how people call it. So since our employees will be laid off, you have to pay them money. And that particular money they will be demanding for higher. And the company who want to buy, the predator company cannot afford that. So they, they have no choice than to leave the what the company. Another one is that the company, the shareholders can decide to sell all the assets. Once you want to buy the company, they can decide selling selling all the productive assets that the company has, all the valuable assets. They can start selling it and make the company look what unattractive for you. So since you want to buy us, you are worrying us that you want to buy, we just start disposing some of the valuable assets, some of the things that is attracting you to, to say that you want to buy us. We start selling them. We start selling them and it will make the company an you want to go and marry someone and before you know the person starts dressing anyhow like you you are going to lose interest and that's what we are talking about here it's because of something that you want to buy that company and the people that think they, they, they started selling that thing it means that what is what is bringing you what is attracting you is no more there so that that runs you will go that those are some of the defensive tactics against takeover words Build. The company can make a reverse offer, which you call a counter offer. The company can also be delaying the process by looking for a highest bidder to sell to. The company can also start selling the productive asset of the company to make it look unattractive. The company can also demand a higher amount to be paid to what? to the employees that will be made redundant as a result of the takeover or the acquisition. Let's now look at what we call estimating the economic gains of major and cost of major. So what we are trying to do now is that no company will be willing to merge or acquire a company that at the end of the day will be giving them extra cost. No. You are doing this because you want to reduce costs and you also want to increase revenue. So what will happen is that sometimes the merger will always give you a gain. It's because of the gain, because of the benefit. That is why you want to acquire the company. So we calculate the gain by looking at this. Okay, if you put the two companies that are merging, example, the MTN, the Ethel Tigo. If you look at the asset of the Ethel Tigo, it's 200. Ethel is 200 million. Let's put 200 million. That's the asset of Ethel 
is 200 million. Tigo is 300 million. If you put these two companies together, all things being equal, you need to have a total value of what? 500 million in the combined what? Entity. But sometimes it might happen that you are going to have six, 600 million. It means that there is a gain of what? 100 million. So how do we calculate a gain? The gain is calculated as the gain is calculated as the total assets, the total assets of the combined, the total assets in the combined, the combined entity, the combined entity minus hmm, the sum, the sum of the assets of the two entities, the sum of the assets of the two entities so the sum of the assets of the two entities so if you what is the value of the assets now in the two companies and what is what should have been a value if you put the two together the difference will give us the gain sometimes we can also look at the cost the cost plus a plus a yeah yeah, um, sorry, please. My internet, I'm um, dropped off. I missed um this part. Maybe you can help me again. The game, the game part. Yes, yeah, calculation of the game. So the game we I are saying the that the yeah. game. What we are saying is that we are saying that the if you put the two assets together in the new company, and what is the value, and what should have been the value of the two companies, they will give you the assets. So if you add the two assets, this is the asset. So I was using this, Etel Tigo. So let's assume that Etel was having 200 million, Tigo was having what? 300 million. All things be equal, if you made these two companies, their assets should have been what? 500 million. But now they are saying that the asset is 600 million. It means that it's a what? There's an increase of 100 million. That increase over there is what we call the gain. The gain. All right. The cost. Sometimes we can try to find the cost to the company which is acquiring, the acquirer. Sometimes we can find the cost. You see, Tigo, Tigo is the B. Tigo want to acquire Etel. All things being equal, Tigo should pay 200 million to what? To the shareholders of what? Etel. If they want to acquire all the 100%, all things being equal, they should pay 200 million. But Tigo end up paying what? 250 million to the shareholders of this. You can see that Tigo is incurring additional cost of how much? Tigo is incurring additional cost of how much? Tigo is incurring additional cost of how much? Can anyone hear me? Yes. You know, I'm here. Okay. So the asset of the A, let's take the A. The asset of the A, the total value of their company is 200 million. But the B want to acquire then and B is now paying 250. What can you see? So they, they say okay. there is a, an extra amount of 50 million. 50 million. Okay. Do, yes. This case don't say that it's good job. If you are doing consolidation, it's good job. But if you are doing mergers and acquisition, it is cost to the company. Oh, okay. It is a cost to the company. So the cost is calculated as the, the cash payment minus what the value of the company that you are acquiring. So what is the cash that you are paying? You are paying 250. And what is the value of the company? 200. So you are incurring a cost of what? The cost of 15 million. 15 million. All right. The next one is where we find the net present value. The net present value. The net present value, what we are talking about is the what? Is the net gain. The net gain. So if you are, you can see that the gain that we have over here, from what, from what, from what we did, the gain was what? 100. 100. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay. 
the company is going to the, the, the acquirer or let's assume the parents, let's say the parent company. Okay, but it's not parents. All right. So the parent is having what? Is getting a gain of 300 million from what? From the acquisition. But they are also incurring a cost of what? 50 million. 50 million. So what would be the net gain from the transaction? Gain minus the cost. Okay. So the, this one is gain. The net present value is the gain minus the cost. But the cost is the cash payment minus the value of the company that you are acquiring. All right. This is all about this one. Let's take two practice questions. Then we see how we can go about this. Let's take the practice question. Maybe let's take like three. All right. Let's take the first one. Auntie Jocelyn, how are you doing? Auntie Jocelyn. Auntie Jocelyn, are you there? Auntie Elizabeth, can you read a question for us? Company A has a value of. Sorry, good morning, sir. Don't worry, you. The, the, the good morning that won't do anything. <laughs> company A has a value of 200 million, and Company B has a value of 70 million. A merger between the two has just gone through a cost saving with. Present value of 25 million students. It's expected to be achieved. Company A paid cash of 85 million Ghana cities for the entire paid up capital of company B required. What is the total value of the two firms after merger? Calculate the cost of merger to the shareholder of company A to the pro proportion of gain due to company A shareholder. All right. So what is the total value of the company? 270. Is what? 270. 270. I want to be seeing the people who are saying that thing. Oh, sorry. Senior, are you the one saying the 270? Yes, sir. Okay. I know that a lot of people will say 270. All right. Okay. Auntie Ellie. The total value of the company is what? Um, oh, see that is is the eighty five. plus seventy. Plus the seventy. No, no, no. What is the total value of the two firms after the merger? Those values that you are saying two firm two seventy are. Someone is saying that you cannot see my screen. Is that the same for all of you? Uh, the screen that uh, your letters are small, so let's see. I guess it's the next way for the person. So as you increase the font size. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh, that's interesting. So the person can see now. Okay. So they are saying that what is the total value of the two firms after the major? Is it the 200 and then those ones are before the major? Is someone saying you can't see at all? I think it's the next week. It might be the next week. Small, small. The person can't see it at all. So maybe he has to drop off and then rejoin again. Yeah, it's true that it might be the next week. Person say you can't see at all. This is not fair. <laughs> hey, he say he has been, he has been going yeah. up, coming. As someone a critical. <laughs> Let me stop sharing the screen and see whether.
Tina, can you see now? Check and see. Okay, he said he will stick with the sound. Okay, so you can see that the, the 200 and then the 70 are all before the what? The major. The major. But I said, what is the total value of the two frames after the major? The question is, what is the gain from this particular transaction? What will be the gain? What will be the gain from the... What is the gain? Auntie Lizzie, what is the gain from this one? What is the gain? Senior, what is the gain? If you read, what will be the gain that the majoring or the major is bringing? That should be 25 million. 60. Yes, the gain is the 25 million, the cost savings. The cost savings is the gain. So if they if they merge, it means that they won't, they won't spend that particular 25 million as a cost again. So that is the gain for the major. So the gain is what? 25 million. But how do we calculate gain? How is gain calculated? How is gain calculated? Gain is calculated as what? The total value of the company after the merger, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, the total value of the company after the merger, that is the PVAB. That is the total value of the company after the merger. Man is the total value of the company before the merger, which is the present value of those one. That is before the merger. So what is the value of the company before the merger? The two companies. 270. 270. Okay, now what is the gain? 25. So you can see that we can find the total value of the company by adding the value before to the to the gain. So yeah. if you are asked to find the total value of the company after the merger, it is calculated as the gain plus the total value of the company before the merger. Change of subject. Okay, change of subject. Okay. So this will be 270 is equal to what? The total value of the company Five. after the merger. That will give us how much? 295. 295. That is what they are asking you. Okay. okay. So sometimes they will not give you the new value of the company, but they will give you a gain. Whenever you see cost savings, whenever you see revenue will increase, that is a gain. All right. So this will be 295 million. Can we move on? Yes, okay. please. Calculate the cost of the merger to the shareholders of company A. What will be the cost to the shareholders of company A? What is the cost to them? So the, that that will be maybe fifteen. Yeah, that is fifteen. The value of the company is seventy, but we are giving them what? Eighty-five. Eighty-five. Five. So the SS is the cost. Are we okay? Yes, this sir. question came in August. It was one of the cheapest for twenty months. Oh. Don't worry, we are going to solve that one. It's the last question. One of the cheapest for 20 marks. Very simple. <laughs> I don't know, you don't know. <laughs> so I was there. I don't know what will happen. So I just decided, okay, maybe yesterday I saw relevant costing, which was one of the cheapest in the exam. But since you are not taught, you don't know. So I was thinking, no. Uh, maybe something can happen like this again. So let me just come and teach you. If you go, if it doesn't come, you are learning. So just put it in your mind. Maybe one day you use it. Okay. What is the portion of the gain due to companies A shareholders? What is the portion of the gain due to company 
a shareholders. What do you think they are talking about? Uh, the NPV. Is it the NPV? Yeah, they are talking NPV. about the NPV. Okay. <laughs> hey, when they use this English. All right. It should be 10. It should be what? 10. 10. So it means that the gain will be shared company. B will be having what? 15. Which is a what? That, that is a cost to the company A, but that is a gain to companies what? B. Mm. Are you okay? Yes, All right. So this will be 25 minus what? 15. 15. It means that those people, their, their shares is 70 million. I give them 85. Mm -hmm. It means that they are taking 15 million out of the game. All right. Let's look at the two or another one. Then we see. Okay, let's look at this. Robert, uh, let me see your comment. Okay. What is the gain from the merger? What is the cost of the merger? Assuming Robert Limited offered cash. What is the cost of the merger? Assuming Robert Limited offered stock. What is the present value of the acquisition under the cash offer? What is the present value of the acquisition under the stock offer? Explain why Robert Limited shareholders will insist on stock offer instead of the cash offer gain from the merger. Robert Limited is considering the acquisition of Adam Limited. Robert Limited has a value of 200,000 Ghana cities and Adam Limited value of 10,000 Ghana cities. Consultants of Robert Limited estimate that the acquisition will result in administrative cost savings of 500 cities per annum perpetuity. There are two options for the settlement term. Robert Limited to pay cash of 14,000 for the entire trade value of Adam Limited or offer 50% holding in the combined firm the shareholders of Adam Limited. The opportunity cost of capital applicable to Robert Limited is 10%. Required uh, is the gain from the major. You have, you have read the, require, the requirement already. Yes, I just wanted to repeat again. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So what is the gain from the major? 500. 500. But this 500 is what? The annual into perpetuity, isn't it? Yeah. So the gain, always the gain, they are asking you the present value of the gain. So this is perpetuity. We have to discount it, isn't it? Yes. So how do we discount perpetuity? How do you find present value? Perpetuity doesn't have future value. So the gain will be equal to the what? To the present value of what? The perpetuity. And this present value can be calculated as the amount divided by what? The rate. That's how we find perpetuity. Or you can say one over the rate multiplied by what? The amount. One over the rate multiplied by the amount, but to be at the safer side, it is five hundred divided by the what? The the rate, which is a cost of capital. Sometimes they will give you growth. They will say this one will grow by this. We subtract the growth from the rate before we do it. So this will be five hundred divided by zero point what? One. One. So, but if they give you a growth rate, maybe the growth rate, the, this amount will grow by two percent. You subtract the two percent from ten before you divide. All right, we look at this under time value of money. So what would be the gain? What would be the present value of the gain? 5,000. 5,000. 5, okay. That is, a, that is a gain. Very simple. Let's now come here. What is the cost of the major assuming Robert Limited offered cash? So what would be the cost if they offer cash? What will be the cost if they offer cash? Be four thousand. That will be four thousand. They are paying fourteen thousand for how much? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. So the cost to them will be what? The payment. The four thousand. Are we okay? 
Okay. All right. Let's come. If they offer stock. If they offer stock 50, they are offering 50% holding in the combined firm to shareholders of what? Adam. So what will be the first thing that you have to do? Okay, so you have to find. You have to do what? What will be the first thing that you do? Do you know the value of the combined firm? Yes. What's the value? 30. It's what? 30,000. No, no, no. That is before. 35,000. It's 35. Is the before plus again? Uh, again, yeah. That the 20 and then the 30. That is the value before. But after the merger or the combined firm, it's always before value plus again, unless there's no gain. Okay. The one that we did that we have the change of formula is the same thing everywhere. This change of formula one that we did is the same thing everywhere. So the combined value, the combined value will be their value before plus the gain that is coming. So it will be 30,000 plus what? The gain, which is what? 5,000. So the combined value will give us what? 35,000. Am I correct? Yes. So what will be the what will be the value now? What value are they going to give them? They are giving fifty percent of this, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that will give us what? Seventeen five hundred. That will be seventeen five hundred. So the value that they are going to offer, the cash that they are going to pay, the cash payment will be seventeen five hundred. So what will be the cost if they are using the stock? What will be the cost if they are using the stock? What will be the cost? I'm, 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 I'm lost. Is yeah? I'm lost. Plus, where, where are you? Which part of Accra are you? Or which, are, which part of Ghana are you? <laughs> from, from the terminal combined value. Yeah, the combined one. You were the one that I said change of subject, and you also agree that it's change of subjects, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Let's come here. This is how we find the gain. You agree that this is how we find the gain. The gain is equal to the combined value minus what the value before, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now if the asking, combined value, and I'm saying the combined value is the gain plus the value after, right? The value before, not after. Okay. Okay. The gain over here, the B, the B, V, A, B over here is the value after the measure. Okay. And then this one is the value before the what? The measure. Are you okay? Okay. All right. So this is the gain and this and this. So the, you are giving a gain and you are also giving the value what? Before. And you want to before. find this one. What do you do? You the make the subject, isn't it? Okay, sure. All right. They will not give you the, the, the combined value. You have to find a combined value. So the combined value is equal to the gain plus their value before. Okay. Okay. Are you okay? Yes, please. All right. Let's move on now. Okay. So what will be the cost to them? I'm sure that will be 7500 If they're using the stock. They're using stock, yes, though. They will give them 17500 for 10000 are we okay with that side? Yes, sir. All right. So what is the present value of the acquisition under the cash offer? What is the present value? I'll be 1,000. That would be 1,000. Is the gain minus the cost? 4,000. That would be 1,000 under the cash offer. But what, what of the stock offer? 4,000. The stock offer will be 5,000 minus what? That would be a negative. 500. 
So that would be negative what? 500. Okay. Negative to 500. All right. Okay. Explain why Roberts Limited shareholder will insist on stock offer instead of what? Cash. Do you think they will they will, they will, they will insist on the cash offer? Uh, so the cash offer doesn't fit that in. Are you sure? It is a stock doesn't that does not it's, it is a stock. The cash will favor them because there will be a return of thousand. Yes. Yes. So, so maybe maybe the is the question that is that is the question is the question that is saying this one. Explain why the Roberts Limited will in six on cash offer instead of what the stock offer or explain why Adams Adam Limited will insist on stock offer instead of what cash offer. Are you okay? But all okay. things being equal, maybe they want to see something beyond this one and see they are insisting on the stock offer because the money that maybe you are not having cash. If you are not having cash, but you are still losing. That's right. Maybe you opt for this. Stop. Okay. But all things be equal, it should be the cash. So maybe it's the question, it's the framing of the question. All right. We have done two. Since now we have the understanding, let's go to the August question. The August mm -hmm. question is similar to one the one that we have solved right now. It's question four. Okay, someone should read the question four for us. Marco Ghana. Limited is a company in Ghana operating the manufacturing industry and currently value at 200 million. The new limited is also operating the same industry, but on a smaller scale and is currently valued at 80 million. Due to growth, growing challenges operating environment currently, the shareholders of both companies agreed to a hundred percent equity acquisition, hundred percent equity acquisition. Bay Limited by Marco Ghana Limited. A detailed research analysis by the finance team of Marco Limited has shown the following. There will be an incremental operational operation cost of 40 million per annum in perpetuity due to the increased number of branches. The combined company market share will improve by 15% per annum on the average leading to incremental revenue of 160. 160 million Ghana cities per annum in perpetuity. Based on the analysis above, both parties agreed to seal the deal under the following payment term. Option one, Marco Limited pay 170 million in cash for the 100% equity of the Limited. Option two, Marco Ghana Limited is offered to offer 25% of the combined company's equity shareholders of the new limited at the payment for 100% equity. The cost of capital of Marco Ghana Limited is 15% annual. Required. Calculate the gains from the acquisition for Marco Ghana Limited. B. Calculate the cost of acquisition to Marco cash is paid under option 1. Calculate the cost of acquisition to Marco Ghana Limited if 25% of the combined equity is used for the payment under option two. You see the cash, the cash option. Even if you can't remember anything, the cash option should not be wrong for you. So someone should mention the, the cost under the cash before we move on. What would be the listing under the the cash? What would be the cost under the cash? What would be the cost to them under the cash? Can someone hear me? It will be 90 what? Million. It will be 90. 
90. Okay. Yeah. So 170 minus 80, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Let's now come to the gain. What will be the gain? The gain is always about the savings that they are going to make. That is always the gain. So look, look at the gain now. What will be the gain? Again, someone should calculate again or should just give me the figure before we do whatever we want. We can do to have it. I don't know if I'm going 266.67 million. It will be what? Uh, 266.67 million. Okay, let me, let me also check. He said it's two six six what? Six, seven million. Are you sure? Is it one zero six six point six seven? No please. Which figures are you using? We are using the, the forty. No, the forty is a, is a cost. Oh, okay. I use the incremental revenue once the million. And and what is the cost of capital that you use? Right I use the fifteen percent. So if you do one sixty divided by zero point five, it's fifteen percent too. Fifteen percent. Zero point one five. Okay, I'm coming. One sixty divided by zero point one five. Okay, I'm getting ten six six something, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But you are going to incur a cost before doing that. So you have to net the cost. So you can find the, the revenue. But before you get this revenue, there will be an incremental cost resulting from what? Mm -hmm. The measure. So you find the present oh, okay. value of the cost also and take it. Or okay. via the safer mm -hmm. side, you just find a net gain. The net gain will be the revenue minus the cost, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That will okay. give us what? 120. 120. This course, you are incurring this course because of the number of branches that you are going to establish. So it's, it's a course relevant to what? To the major. And the revenue too, you are also getting this excess revenue because of what? The major. So you are going to incur a course of 40 to generate a revenue of what? 160. So the net gain is 120. So you can now find the present value of the 120. So what That's are you? Yeah. He said that it's also going to be improved by 15%. The 15% is the 160 that they are giving to you. Okay. You can see that they say improved by 15% on the average, leading to. Sure. Okay. So, leading yeah. To, yeah. With this, meaning the 15% is already included. Yes, it's, it's the 15% that is given at the 160. 160. So, you can see that they say. The, co the combined company's market share will improve by 15% per annum on the average leading to incremental revenue oh. of 160 per annum in perpetuity. So there is the improve of the 15% that is given as a 160. So the increased share, share market of 15% that is generating the 160 revenue. So what are we getting? 800. 800. Is 800. So the gain is 800. You can show how you calculated mm -hmm. the gain. So you see the revenue minus what? Mm -hmm. The cost. So the net gain will be into the perpetuity. Then you present value it. Sometimes they can say mm -hmm. this will be this will be there for five years. Then if it is five years, then you will present value using annuity. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. It means that the 120 will last for only what? Five years. So you can present value the one by one. Because the gain, we are talking about the gain today. So you can present value all of them one by one. Okay. Are you okay? And then on the on the rate again, you said when there is a growth, you have to deduct it from the rate, right? Yes. When there is a growth, you have to calculate, you have to start part when you are doing perpetuity. Mm. All right. Okay. But this one, they are giving you perpetuity. It will be there forever. But I can say this, okay. this, this particular gain will last for only five years. And we assume that the, all of these are arising at the end of every year. 
So if that this happens, it means that you use the word, the discount factor of 15% to present value the one by one, like how we do it for cash flow. Mm -hmm. All right. But can you also use annuity? Be there all yes, you, you can use annuity to do it. That's all. Okay. okay. So we have calculated a gain already. And they are now saying that the option two, they should give 25% of the combined company's equity to shareholders of what? Gini Limited as a payment for the 100%. So what would be the 25% of the combined? Or what is the value of the combined thing? I hope for now, we don't have problem with how to calculate the combined thing. Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> Okay, let's try. Do you have anyone here who is called Michael Labby? If someone says he has business for me. Someone sent me a message requesting for the note, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Okay, don't worry. Yeah. I will send it to you. Yeah, the combined one. Yeah, the, the combined, combined is what? Maybe 1080. You're asking me? <laughs> yes. That's what I said that I had. Yes, is the game plus their value before yeah. the merger, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, so that would be 800 plus 280. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that would be us. <laughs> then. 80. So if you find, they are saying that we should find what? So the payment using the stock will be 25% of that 0 0.25 mm -hmm. times what? 1080. 1080. So what to what, what be the answer? 270. Okay. 270. So what will be the cost under the stock offer? 270 minus what? 270 minus what? 270. Minus 80. Minus 80. So the amount that you are paying money is the value of the company. So that will give us what? So if they ask you to advise the Marco Limited, which advice are you going to give to them? So assuming you have this one, they are having two options, isn't it? Yeah. 170 and what? 270. So so one will be 90 and one will be 90. 90. Okay. And they ask you to advise them. Which advice are you going to give to them? You go for cash. They should go for cash. Very simple. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all about the... I have only four questions. I can't solve all the four for you. So try the, try the three on your own. All right. But this is all about the majors and acquisition. Sometimes you can see theory questions. Last thing it was a defensive tactics. All right. Sometimes you can even ask you about advantages and disadvantages. So nobody knows. I have completed the distance with you, the FM distance with you. So I wish you all the best in your exams. If you want to meet me next city, no problem. I'm there. But if you don't want to meet me, then you meet me in different class. All right. Don't worry, I, I, I've, I've even sent this note. I bet this note is on your page, isn't it? Yes. Yes, so the person who is talking about this one. You see, the thing is, uh, there is no easy way to pass these ICA exams. So if you are trying to maybe find your way of passing, my brother, you will find your way, sir, you'll be tired. It's all about <laughs> commitment. You see, some of you, like, you, you don't even read the messages on the page. Then last hour, then you'll be giving people pressure. No, you can't use last hour. It, just look at just look at the size of the book. Look at the size of the book. 
and you are now using two weeks to write the essay. You want you want to use two weeks to pass. It can it, it cannot happen. The exam is not difficult, but it is demanding. Yes. But if you you are right now, there was a, this note is on the pitch, and you haven't seen the notes. Now you are coming to give me pressure that I should forward notes. Oh my brother. I wish you all the best. There is no easy way to pass this exam. The same Hello, way. Linus. Yeah. Have a cook. Um, please make the. Yeah, I was saying that make it um available on your YouTube because uh, because of network issues, some of yeah, us yeah, yeah. couldn't enjoy the class. Well. The the major the major I'll put the major there. I'll put the major there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So a question before just to clear my like the is the cost the cost you're calculating are we calculating it in the in the name of the buyer? We are doing it for the parents. We are doing it for for the acquirer, which is the buyer. Okay, so the cost they will incur, right? Yes. Oh, okay. So when we are calculating using the share, comparing between the shares and the cash. Yeah, we will look at the one that will favor yes. them. Paying less, right? Yeah, then we give the advice on that they should choose the. Choose oh, the oh. But if you are doing it for the, the the seller, you see that the seller that will be a gain to them. Hello. Yeah. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, okay. you can see that the, to the to the mm -hmm. seller, that will be a gain to them, isn't it? Yeah. So if they ask you to calculate the gain for the, 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 the seller, then the same thing that you use, but just that the cost will not be a gain to them. If they ask you to advise, you will give them the highest one because they are now going to have a higher gain. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. I have a question, right? Okay. The eight that we got. Okay. The eight and yeah. For the game, right? Yeah. For having asked the money of 40, then yes. they had yes. one two. Yes. Right. With the, the 800, how did it come about? We we present value it because they say that, that one will be into perpetuity. Perpetuity, okay. So we are looking at the, the gain today, present value of the gain. So you can see that all of them will be in perpetuity. The, yeah. There will be incremental operation cost of 40 million per annum in perpetuity due to increased number of days. The incremental revenue also per annum in perpetuity. So the gain that you are going to get is the present value of the gain because we are carrying out the transaction today. So if we subtract, you are getting 120. This 120 will be per annum to the foreseeable future. We don't know. So we just present value it by using the cost of capital of 15%. If you want to find a present value of perpetuity, is the amount over the discount factor. Okay. So 120 you divided by 0 0.15. Thank you, sir. Are you getting that 800? Yes, sir. Okay, so that is again. Thank you. Okay. But you always have to know that the combined value is the game plus their value before the what? The measure. The measure. All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Auntie Joyce. I'm listening. I didn't hear from you again. Mm. How I was the really paper? No, was okay. So we are passing. Ah, we pray for Martin Messi. Okay. But me, for me, if I write this, and if I will pass, I know if I won't pass, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you can ask, you can ask my boss. Senior. Yes, sir. I mean, me, I will tell you that this paper won't pass. Even if you are giving me false hope, I know that I won't pass. I will tell you that <laughs> I won't pass. So stop giving me false hope. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anything can yeah. still happen. So 